I just see a growing need and want to participate in something social where people have longer term formats of commitment and longer term relationships that they're building. The real world clubhouse, right? The real life clubhouse and what I think a trend that I'm seeing happen. I think people are going to value restaurants and bars less and they're going to value going to uh, specific clubs and joining specific groups more. So last week uh, on the podcast, I really hated on Clubhouse. If you didn't see that podcast, it's because you're probably not subscribed and maybe you should hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, switch to this camera. You could see that subscribe button. You Can you see that? That's a subliminal messaging right there for that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little blurred out, it's but little, they can see it. I mean, okay, but look, now now you know it's a subscribe Point button. Point at it. And you can, you can, you can subscribe. Um, Look, I, I hate it on, on Clubhouse um, because I just think it's going to get swallowed, chewed up and swallowed out by competitors like Facebook and Instagram. They're going to come out with their own stuff, um, you know, chat rooms and things like that. I think Reddit and Twitter are working on things. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that this app is going to get crushed in so many facets. And I think the other thing is that, you know, it's a form of content that forces you to have to be live and have to be paying attention in a very particular way. And that's just not that great. I think a lot of people are just, I don't know, I think you're going to get f- clubhouse fatigue and it's just going to wear off. But what I, I did, yeah, I did hard. Yeah. Tell, they actually talk to me about that. Like, uh, so it came out and I, I was super gung ho. I, I found a lot of value out of it. Um, but the thing is, is that because like you said, you have to be live and present. And it's normally during the day. Normally when I'm working, I have to focus on things. You, you just can't. And anything in the evening, you know, I have other things to do. It just it wasn't fitting my schedule. Mm-hmm. Now, there, when it first started, I made great connections. And we made Absolutely. jokes that because uh, you can't text, we, you know, connect on Instagram, on LinkedIn. So yeah. we still use other platforms to connect. Yeah. But yeah, I got so fatigued, burnt out. I had to delete the app. I I have it back because there is one room I do like to go in and and it is a time that I'm actually available and it's once a week, so it fits. Yeah. But I like- You you can just twist this knob here, by the way, so it'll stop twisting on you. Um, But yeah, no, sorry to interrupt your flow. But yeah, it's, like you said it right, like fatigue, burnout, like- I just can't deal with it anymore. And the notifications I get are just crazy. Yeah, there's just too many people. There's just too many people doing it. Um, yeah, I only fix, fix that mic because it will, it will oh be so God. much easier if you don't have to <laughs> fuck with it every five seconds. Um, okay, so what I, what I think is happening here is obviously we're in a reopening of the world. We're getting back to a scenario where things are happening again. Apparently in Florida, everything's been normal. and uh, Texas, everything's been normal. And um, I don't see a huge spike in cases. Just saying. Now, that might be because they have a lot of people got vaccinated. It might be because of lots of people are washing their hands more. Maybe it's because they're wearing masks. I don't know. Point being, world's opening back up again. And I think there's going to be a huge, huge swell of people wanting in-person connection in a whole new way. And I honestly believe that taking your online community and the people that you've connected with online and actually kind of start like devaluing that a little bit, putting less effort into scaling masterminds online or through Zoom and actually spending more time connecting in person and building real life clubs, right? Real life clubhouse, essentially. Invite only, very specifically highly curated and bringing people to a physical location with a lot of consistency. And I love to say the reason why the church worked is because it was church was every Sunday. And I'm talking about Christian church in this case, right? But the idea of very powerful consistency around community gatherings like Friday nights or, um, you know, Saturday mornings or whatever it is. Like if you can build consistency in your in-person gatherings and you can build community and you can rally people around very specific topics or very specific values, That is going to be the trend of 2021. And I think it's going to carry into 2022 and further. I really believe that one of the biggest opportunities uh, entrepreneurs and creatives and influencers out there can use is to rally people in person, to build that community. Now, I'm seeing this, the impact of this and the effects of this at the farm. I'm, for those of somehow don't know, I... uh, 
have a farm here. I, I built it over years. It's now my ninth season building a intentional community. I use the word intentional community because it's very specifically trying to build a community of people that have very similar values. At the beginning, that was focused on like revolution of sorts, sustainability, living off the grid, saying kind of a giant fuck you to the system. Like all of that was like part of it. I would say now it's focused on healthy lifestyle, wellness. Um, it's focused to some degree on sustainability and farming and market gardening and permaculture and regenerative agriculture and all those different components. But it's also got a very core component of, to me, community. I, I say of all the things that we grow at Valhalla, the number one thing that we grow is community and smiles. That's what we're, that's what I measure our success in and boots on the ground, right? How many people are coming to the farm relating to the farm, taking on projects at the farm, or just finding something that really speaks to them there. And whether that be beekeeping or planting blueberry bushes or, you know, uh, just you know, picking up a shovel or a pickaxe or, you know, pitchfork and, and shoveling some stuff into wheelbarrows and just getting out their sweat on, or whether it just be making pizza and, and hanging out and meeting people at a farm table dinner. All of those things are things that I want to scale at our farm. And I believe that building a financial system or membership model, kind of like if you had a membership model to a gym or to a club, uh, you know, that model exists in certain cities. There are things like Soho House that I can think of, right? Like they have like multiple locations. You can go, you get a membership. And then when you travel around the globe, you can go to these, these different locations as a way of kind of finding community. And you know that based on the price point and based on to some degree, the curation there's a degree, there's like a, a, a type of person that finds itself in that community. Now, I think if you do that very specifically and you intentionally curate and you figure out what the parameters are for your community and you curate the community very powerfully, as well as you have an application process or a trial process. And the trial is not just because you want people to like pay a month and then see if they like it so that they don't have to commit to a whole year. I'm talking about the trial from the perspective of the community where the community gets to decide whether they think this member fits or not. Actually, a try out. Both a trial for the, use, for the person who's joining, but also a try out for the members to see how they feel about the new person joining in. I believe that is going to gain an enormous amount of, of, of impact. I think you're going to see a lot of like speakeasy style vibes going on because there's still going to be restrictions potentially around big groups in more socialized countries like where I live. Uh, in Canada. And so I think you're going to see a very good underground kind of vibe, like this kind of secret society, like without necessarily having to be a secret society or having, you know, any occult kind of symbolism or practices or any specific religious affiliation or anything like that. I just see a growing need and want to participate in something social where people have longer term formats of commitment and longer term relationships that they're building. I think people are going to value restaurants and bars less, and they're going to value going to uh, specific clubs and joining specific groups more. And so I think that's a big trend. I think if you're going to build a, a mastermind in 2021, I think you should consider that. If you're going to build an event, I think you should consider a ongoing event rather than just a one-off event. If you're a physical location and you're a restaurant or a bar or something i think you need to figure out how you could do membership in a different way how you can have exclusive nights where literally you cannot come in unless you become a member and to become a member you have to understand the culture of becoming a member what that even means and that's a part of of some form of, i'm going to use a term indoctrination but that's the right term for it it's like again it doesn't have to have dogma of religion or any religious context but indoctrinating people into the culture of your community is important and that's important online. It's important when you're building a funnel. It's important when you're building a Facebook group. It's important when you're building a freaking engagement group on Instagram, which is a thing, by the way, if you didn't know, right? All, anyone who's maybe doesn't growth hack their own Instagrams, if you didn't know that engagement groups are a thing where people like comment and stuff, that's a thing. But building indoctrination into your community is a surefire way of actually getting people to understand and allowing that community to have a viral loop to essentially grow itself because then people understand the culture and they explain that culture to the next person, the next person, the next person. Kind of like what Clubhouse could have been, right? Like, hey, there's this place where all these really interesting tech geeks are starting to rally. And it started kind of in Silicon Valley, but now all of a sudden there's 
more and more people joining from all over the world and they're all tend to be like creators and entrepreneurs and really interesting people who have done like really interesting things. And then eventually it kind of got into the mass, you know, population and it kind of ruined itself in my personal opinion. Um, but I think that that is going to be something we are starving for. There's a huge appetite for. I think there's a lot of uh, budget for that. And I think people are interested more in that than they are um, in more traditional networking events. I think we're less interested in just like a normal cocktail thing or, in, in, you know, even Quebec, we call it cinq assets, uh, which just it means five to seven or like happy hour, essentially. Um, but the idea of more intentional gatherings, longer format, like having a dinner and then having something going on after the dinner or having like a full day or an excursion uh, and something that's happening very consistently so that even if I can't show up one week, but then I can show up the next week or have other benefits, like maybe I get access to some of your online content or maybe I get access to discounts on things or maybe I get access to um, other tiered benefits of sorts and even tiered systems could all, or tiered you know, levels of joining or membership can all be a thing. So I'm going to be testing this at the farm. You know, my goal is to get 50 members in our Valhalla Co-ops farm. It's basically people joining the farm, becoming a supporter, literally becoming an owner, actually, because we're actually a cooperative, meaning they become an owner of the actual farm business, and therefore they could get, you know, dividends and other things in the future. It's really not about that. I mean, our farm is not going to scale to the point where it's, it has extra revenue that we're paying in dividends anytime soon because we're going to be reinvesting in the soil and reinvesting in community and then hiring more people and making the membership even more cool. And so the way we're planning on doing that is building wellness around that. We're getting a hot tub and sauna, doing uh, farm table dinners. We're building a whole outdoor kitchen. We're like building and, and getting the equipment that it takes for us to uh, make people really comfortable, having a great time in community in a way that's safe, COVID safe, all the stuff, blah, 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 right? But uh, most importantly, that is recurring. And so you get to see similar faces over and over and over again and build real rapport and real connection and real love yeah, I'll go as far as saying love between those people. And anyone that's going to scale in-person friendship in 2021, 2022, and beyond is going to do well. I mean, I, I think it's always been a thing. Like, if you can scale real friendship and camaraderie within a group, it always helps the the value of that group, whether online or off. But I, I just think that those who are courageous enough to do it offline are going to win big. And so that's my advice for any of you, of you, any of you who are entrepreneurs or looking to capitalize or maybe add a revenue stream or trying to figure out how you can disrupt your own business or do some stuff. Membership models are a way and less so online because we're, we're valuing that less. We, we have so many memberships. We have, we're, we're going to have podcast memberships and Netflix memberships and all the memberships um, in person. Try it, scale it, do it. I'm going to do it and I'll uh, report back over time. Yeah. <laughs>